Oh, thanks, Tim, and uh, thanks to the, the team at Chair Cafe for the opportunity to present uh, on antisense therapeutics again. Uh, the slide that we have up uh, on the screen highlights the company has a uh, market capitalization of around 110 million at 19 cents. Uh, in December of last year, uh, we had a, a very successful capital raising where we raised uh, eight and a half million at uh, 10 cents. So uh, also this slide shows the significant uh, rally that we've had in the share price post the financing. And I think that's uh, due in large part to the tremendously successful uh, year that we had uh, last year from a development uh, from a development perspective, but also the infusion of this uh, critical uh, development capital, which will allow us to, to continue to build on that uh, you know, tremendous success to date in the, in the development of our anti-sense programs. Uh, next slide, thanks. So the company is uh, based in Melbourne and is uh, laser focused, if you like, uh, on developing and commercialising our two drugs that we have uh, in a clinical development. We call these drugs AT1102 and AT1103. And both of these drugs have completed now multiple successful phase two clinical trials. So we have by any you know, peer comparison, a very uh, advanced and therefore uh, de-risked uh, clinical pipeline of drugs. Our major shareholder is a renowned uh, institutional investor in life sciences, uh, platinum asset management, uh, they are a fund uh, that has now, I think, over 20, uh, $24 billion in uh, funds under management. Uh, they've been a shareholder with the company uh, since we first uh, started our uh, What's Our Lead program today in Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy, and I'll go through that in more detail in my presentation. But they came on board when we were first uh, looking to start that clinical program when the company had a market capitalisation of $5 million and uh, about 500,000 in the bank. So they've been there supporting us all the way through uh, multiple uh, now uh, financings, fortunately all done at higher, higher prices and, and participated in the most recent uh, financing at, uh, at 10 cents. So we're delighted to have them there as our major shareholder and, uh, and to have received their, um, their su support to date on our programs. Uh, as I said, you know, lead program is in this disease, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Given the time constraints today, I'll just focus on, on, uh, on that indication. And it's appropriate because, you know, it's the program that's led to this stellar increase in value in the company. And we think will also be the driver of continued uh, significant growth in, in the company based on the, the very, um, you know, very good data that we've generated to date in this program. Uh, next slide, thanks. So, look, it is no understatement or, or, or hyperbole to say that uh, 2020 was a uh, transformational year for the company. And you can see that uh, on the slide evidenced by the significant uh, achievements that, um, that we had in the year. And, and, and important, I think, also to recognise that, you know, all this um, development progress was done when we were under very um, uh, severe lockdown here in Melbourne. So I think, you know, a, a testament to the experience and uh, let's say the tenacity of the Anisense Therapeutics team to be able to deliver all these significant um, achievements in, in the period. And uh, I'll just sing out, you know, a couple of the most you know, significant there were the, the really exceptional data that we reported from a phase two clinical trial in Duchenne's uh, patients. Again, go into a little bit more detail in my presentation on that. We got rare paediatric disease designation in the US. We got orphan drug designation in the US. We presented some new data at the biggest scientific Congress in Europe where the d, &D experts meet. And that data got a tremendous reception from the experts at the meeting. We listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. We got European drug designation and capped it off with that successful uh, capital raising at the end, end of the year. So, um, what's important to note is that the, the financing that we complete at the end of uh, December will um, be put to work on these um, key activities that we've listed here. So uh, building on the success today, funded to be able to deliver on uh, a, a continued uh, development progress. So, you know, we're really excited about where the company's sitting at, at the present time. And I think that, again, 
is kind of reflected in the way in which the share price is, uh, has been responding to this positive news. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, I guess, you know, also important to note that uh, broad uh, research uh, coverage, uh, analyst coverage that we've received in the period, and this is from you know, some of uh, the biggest broking houses in the country supporting life science companies. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't think it's a, a stretch to say with some of the most highly regarded biotech analysts in the sector, and there's no doubt that this uh, validation provided from these uh, research reports has had a positive Im impact on the, on the share price. Uh, next slide, please. So further to this, um, Mark uh, Sinatra from uh, Corporate Connect, again, you know, uh, very well regarded uh, in the sector for his um, experience in being able to analyze uh, biotech stocks, put out a flash report recently. And he was uh, reporting on uh, what was, um, a uh, setback for a, a potential competitor, a company called Sarepta, market cap um, in US-based uh, company, market cap of uh, over eight billion, who are uh, purely focused in developing drugs for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, had a had a, a, a significant setback in one of their clinical trials. So Mark's sort of reported here on the on what's bad news for Sarepta is good news for the company. You see, he has increased his uh, valuation target as a, as a consequence. So no time really to go through this today, but just encourage anyone, if they've got the opportunity, please do you know, visit our website because we have all these research reports there on the website for those interested in, in reviewing the details. Next slide, thanks. So uh, to share muscular dystrophy, this is the focus of our lead program. It is a uh, genetic, disease of boys, uh, it causes uh, muscle wasting in the boys due to um, the inflammation that the boys have in their muscles that leads to muscle injury and eventually muscle death. Uh, today, um, uh, the disease is 100% fatal, so all boys with Duchenne's will succumb to the disease. The goal of therapy is effectively to slow that steady and progressive muscle wasting and loss. Today, uh, the only way that inflammation in the muscles uh, can be addressed is by using a class of drugs called corticosteroids, first approved over 60 years ago. Now, these corticosteroids have very uh, modest uh, activity or efficacy, but come with some very substantial downsides um, in, uh, in terms of their side effects. You can see them listed there, weight gain, mental and growth retardation, osteoporosis. So there is a, a desperate need for you know, improved therapy, for treating inflammation in these boys. As I said, it's over 60 years ago that this class of therapy was made available um, uh, for patients to treat inflammation. We're looking at a better way of treating inflammation. That's the goal of our drug, H1102. Uh, next slide, thanks. So we studied um, H1102's uh, activity in boys with Duchenne's and in a study that we ran at the Royal Children's Hospital here in Melbourne, which run the biggest clinic in the Southern Hemisphere, treating boys with uh, Duchenne's. The, the study uh, exceeded um, by all our ex, you know, expectations that our, the anticipated outcomes that, that, that we thought were achievable with the trial. Uh, first and foremost, the drug was shown to be uh, very safe, well tolerated, which is a key feature of a drug if you want to advance it into late stage clinical development, which is the plan that we have for this drug. So the drug was shown to be safe, but was also very exciting is we we're able to show that we could actually um, stabilise in these boys that um, progressive muscle uh, loss uh, through the drug's effects in stabilising the upper limb function in the boys that we were assessing who were um, boys more advanced with the disease and uh, who were now in wheelchairs. So we're able to show we could stabilise and, in fact, improved in some of these boys their motor strength and function. The data that we generated has had a tremendous uh, reception, you know, not only from the market but also probably uh, as important from key opinion leaders, those that are you know, treating boys um, internationally with um, Duchenne's who, um, who uh, uh, have given us great um, 
the feedback on on the quality of our data and the view that this drug could find its way you know, to market. Next slide, thanks. So uh, on top of that, we reported some um, exceptional data at the, uh, at the set of this Congress in, uh, in Europe. The key take home for, you know, from this slide is that we were able to show boys having an improvement over an external control of boys who weren't on our therapy on a key parameter for assessing the approvability of these drugs. So this data effectively, if it was repeated in a longer study in more patients, could uh, potentially see the drug approved. Uh, next slide. So um, that's ex exactly our intention to advance this program into a, into a, a longer term clinical study. We're well advanced in our plans for a study to run in Europe. This study with, um, we are looking to design uh, to be a potentially approvable trial. And uh, so, you know, one uh, potentially one study away from being able to market the drug in the second biggest pharmaceutical market in the world, being Europe. We're expecting, um, we're working on our uh, uh, regulatory data now for submission, all going well. We expect to have approvals coming through around the middle of this year. In parallel, we're working uh, on our plans for the US. We're currently um, preparing for a meeting with the FDA to uh, confirm with them next steps for the development of the drug. And we're um, anticipating for that meeting to happen towards the end of this quarter. Next slide. Last slide then, just talk a little bit about the market potential. A um, couple of aspects here to focus on. Uh, firstly, the Duchenne's market is enormous. That's why a company like Sarepta is able to maintain a market cap of 8 billion when they're purely focused on, the, on that therapy. They have one drug, effective for only 20% uh, of boys that have the disease selling uh, now approaching nearly half a billion dollars US um, in the US only. So it's a huge opportunity, premium pricing for the drugs. But when we think about our drug um, H1102, we've got to think more broadly than just the Duchenne's market because this drug we believe has exciting potential beyond the treatment of Duchenne's into other inflammatory disease indications. Based on the data we, we've generated to date, not only in Duchenne's, we've shown the drug to be active in multiple sclerosis, in multiple settings of inflammatory disease. And you can see here, global anti-inflammatory market is poised to uh, tick over $200 billion annually in sales. So for our shareholders, this should come as you know, very exciting news about the potential, um, sales potential of this drug should we continue to be able to successfully advance the program. Uh, next slide, thanks. And just finish by saying, you know, as I said, you know, we, we're expecting to, to build on the tremendous achievements from 2020 um, as identified there and, you know, looking forward to the um, news flow that, will, uh, that we expect, significant news flow that, to, that we expect in the short to medium term as we advance our program in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Mark. Um, great presentation. I, I, can, I could hear the, I could sense the excitement. Um, and a lot of the questions you've actually answered in that presentation, which is great. Um, we note that you, you listed on the uh, Frankfurt Stock Exchange. What's the level of interest from offshore in, in, in your company and, and the drug? Yes, no, thanks, Tim. So yeah, that's a recent, uh, listing that was sort of late November that uh, that that we went through the listing process. Now we've been really happy, you know, with um, the, with the response to the listing. You know, the volumes are building steadily. Um, we're getting outbound interest from investors overseas. I mean, the main driver for listing was that we expected to be, you know, in uh, Europe with a, a clinical trial that we were and anticipating was going to generate more, you know, interest, more visibility for the company. We thought, well, you know, what a great opportunity to leverage from that. We've employed a, a you know, really um, uh, expert um, advisory investor relations firm to manage that process for us. You know, we, um, and when you think of the trading in, in Germany, it's not just what you know, comes via the Frankfurt Exchange, it's also Berlin and the other exchanges as well too. So the volumes are building. But we just think it gives us a, a sort of a foothold, you know, in, in the European market that we expect to, to build on. And, and just quickly, Mark, as I said, you've, you've answered a lot of these questions. The, the addressable market side uh, size in DMD therapies, 
And and what are the potential spin-off applications for the drug? I, I know you touched on it on that last slide. Can you can you elaborate a little bit more? Sure. So um, there's uh, about forty eight thousand boys with Duchenne's in the northern hemisphere. Uh, are we at uh, presently focus on boys more advanced with the disease because they're more desperate for therapies and uh, they're, they're what we call non-ambulant boys. They're about half of the population. So let's call it, you know, 20,000 boys who today have no effective therapies for treating the disease. And you can see in the slide I presented, companies like Sarepta are charging, you know, $400,000 annually for therapies which are only showing very modest activity in that disease indication. So, you know, 20,000 patients, you're charging 200,000 bucks annually, that's a $4 billion market opportunity. You know, so that's, as I said, that's what's driving the, the valuations at uh, companies like Sarepta. Um, other indications, Tim, you know, look, they're, they're as wide as you can think about the, the inflammatory disease landscape. You know, so, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, you can think of um, uh, asthma, you can think of these are the big the big indications, you know, where you know there are a need for um, better therapies. I mean, people have been talking about diseases like Alzheimer's, where inflammation is an important feature. But what we've told our shareholders is probably our initial focus will be to go to the like in Duchenne's into the sort of rare uh, disease um, uh, space where you know there are no effective therapies, where we benefit from the incentives that the regulatory authorities provide for going into rare rare diseases where you can look to command premium pricing with little, no competition. What we've been talking about are, are the neuroinflammatory diseases, Tim, like Duchenne's, and there's a number of those that present like Duchenne's where, you know, there's a need for, for better therapeutic approaches. So it's probably the low-hanging fruit for us, and then we look to expand into, well, you know, the opportunities are abundant. 